What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my full card breakdown and predictions for UFC 283. We have Glover Teixeira going against Jamal Hill. And we are back for another full card breakdown and prediction video this week, breaking down a 15 fight card. We have two title fights, Davison Figueredo, Brandon Moreno four for the flyweight championship. And then we have Glover Teixeira, Jamal Hill for the vacant light heavyweight championship. Should be a very good card. A couple of newcomers like we had last week. Um, looking forward to it overall. I do have two bets thus far for this card. Hopefully keeping the ball rolling after last week went like 10 and one of my picks. The one I got wrong was, was Ketlin Vieira, which... I felt like I could have got a sweep there, but went 3-0 and on the best, the bets, uh, most importantly, and just hoping to keep it rolling here. Not going to be a, a huge card in terms of exposure, but, you know, I think it's a solid card overall, and a couple spots are sticking out. Uh, before we get started, I do have uh, the contest, bringing the contest back for 2023 for these pay-per-views. Um, if you guys are new here to enter the contest, first, you need to leave a like on the video. Second, subscribe to the channel if you do not already. And then third, comment down how many significant strikes you think that Glover Teixeira and Jamal Hill are going to combined for. Uh, first place gets uh, $25 the first. If there's a tie, the tiebreaker does go to the person that did comment first. So be sure to comment down your significant strikes. Um, other thing is... Um I just want to say thank you for everybody that did sign up on DFSbythenumbers.com. Had a, a bunch of new people sign up, and I do appreciate it a lot. Um, this is going to be the last week for the kind of promo I'm doing. I'm doing the, if you sign up for the yearly membership, you will get a uh, t-shirt for free. That's free shipping, and on top of that, the yearly membership is already 10% off. So just huge value there. Uh, the most popular option it being that MMA betting option. With that, you get access to my stats. You get a first notice on all bets in the Discord. Um, two betting articles, the first one coming on Wednesday, the full card and best bet article my favorite seems to be everybody's favorite where I break down the fight it's usually 14 15 probably this week it's going to be like 16 pages um, breaking down the fight giving prediction round method and then the best bet for each and every fight um, confidence ratings all that good stuff and then I do a, another article on Friday talking my main card parlays prelim parlays um, Hail Mary Parlay, which by the way, last week Hail Mary Parlay hit as well. And then also just talking about all the bets I have and just a ton of more information, just a lot of stuff you guys do not see uh, on YouTube. So be sure to check that out, uh, MMA betting, and check out the year option. I'm sending out a bunch of t-shirts today. If you sign up for the year, you get a free t-shirt there. So $10 a month or you can do the 108 a year. And like I said, the 108 a year, that is 10% off. Um, for the yearly membership there. So appreciate everybody that has signed up and appreciate that everybody that is going to sign up in the future. All right. So um, other than that, um, that's about it. Just uh, leave a like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, and also going live Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and then live Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims at 5 o'clock Eastern time. So make sure you are subscribed so you not miss out on all of that. But I say we get into these fights. Uh, we are going to start with the first fight on the card. And we have Simon Oliveira going against Daniel Marcos. We have Simon Oliveira, 31 years old, 5'4", the 67-inch reach, 18-4, and 4-1 and, and four and one in his last five fights. Daniel Marcos, he is 29 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach, 13-0, and 5-0 oh, and and oh in his last five fights. We're going to take a look at the odds like we always do, and we're going to see uh, Simon is a favorite. He opened up as a dog, actually. Plus 136 dog, he opened up Simon Oliveira. He is currently minus 155, and Daniel Marcos opened up minus 156, and he is currently plus 135. So the line uh, kind of flipped there. And, you know, I went and watched this Marcos guy, and I was watching tape from this guy around, like, 2017, 18, 19, and there was a, a period where he took, like, I want to say, like, two years and ten months off, right, from um, his last fight against uh, Gatson and to the Contender Series, and I remember taping this guy for the Contender Series, and he shows up to fight uh, Brandon Lewis, and he looks like a completely different fighter, and I remember watching the Contender Series show, and, you know, him kind of talking about how he had to leave his family to, to go train, and um, it, it paid off, because he looked like a completely different fighter. His striking in that fight looked phenomenal. But outside of that, his takedown defense looks solid. I think that's going to need to come into play here against Simon Oliveira. Um, to be honest, I'm not extremely impressed with either guy in this matchup. You know, Simon Oliveira, he's a long, rangy guy. Um, his striking's okay, but, you know, what impresses me the most about Simon Oliveira is going to be that grappling. Like, when he's typically winning, it is more often not by submission. 61% submission rate for Simon Oliveira, and I just don't know if he's going to be able to take down Marcos here. 
And on the flip side, if Marcos wants to take down Simon Oliveira, he absolutely can. Like, a, a gust of wind is going to be able to take down a guy like Simon Oliveira who just um, has no takedown defense. We saw Tony Gravely, and don't get me wrong, Tony Gravely is a phenomenal wrestler, one of the best wrestlers in the division, right? Um, he took him down 11 times, but man, 11 times, right? Um, and then also Simon Oliveira is just getting taken down easily, pretty much in every fight, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I think Marcos can get takedowns here, stay safe on top. Um... But Simon Oliveira is dangerous off his back. So we'll have to see. But I think Marcos has more paths to victory here as a dog. So I'm going to pick him to win. This is kind of a sketchy fight, a fight I'm going to be staying away from. Two guys that, like I said, I'm not completely sold on. But, man, did Marcos make some serious improvements from his fight two fights ago to the Contender Series. And if he keeps making those improvements and if he shows up looking like he did on the Contender Series, I think it's a very winnable fight for him here. So give me Daniel Marcos to win. I'll take him to win this fight by decision. All right, next we have uh, another newcomer, uh, Cody Stamen going against Luan Lacerda. We have Cody Stamen, who is 33 years old, 5'6", with a 64.5-inch reach, 25-1 and one and 2-3 and three in his last five fights. Luan Lacerda, 30 years old, 5'7", with a 73-inch reach, 12-1, and one and 5-0 and oh in his last five fights. Cody Stamen being a pretty big favorite here, opening up a minus-174 favorite, currently minus-375, and we have Luan Lacerda opening up a plus 149 favorite, currently plus 310. So big favorite here in Cody Stamen. Um, man, um, I went and watched uh, Luan Lacerda, and there's some things I, I like about the guy, and there's some things I, I don't like about the guy. Some things I like about the guy. I mean, this guy is a legit black belt in BJJ. Um, heard the announcers talking about him. He's been training since he was a, a little kid, and um, his grappling's legit. His grappling is very good, but... There's some things that I don't think are going to work in the UFC, and, and those things are, are pulling guard. Those things are just giving up position to go for submissions. I mean, I don't, you know, it, it, it can work sometimes, but man, um, I like the the position over submission type grapplers, right? The guys that are going to win minutes on the mat uh, with their grappling, but no, no, this guy's, you know, rolling for ankles, rolling for legs, um, and that stuff just doesn't work as much in the UFC. Could it work here? I mean, maybe. But Cody Stamen has fought the much better competition here, and it's 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 not even close. Cody Stamen has fought guys like like Aljamain Sterling. Um, he's fought guys like Marab Devalish Philly. He's fought the much better competition here. Um, I will say Cody Stamen has been submitted twice, but again, it's against really good competition. He got submitted by Sterling, and then he got submitted by Syed Nurmagomedov. So I think this would be a, a pretty big upset, honestly, if. Uh, you know, Lacerda was able to pull this off. I don't think Lacerda is going to be able to get takedowns here. Um, I think he's going to have to pull guard, and he, and he will pull guard. He's going to pull guard. He's going to have to, you know, roll for a leg, for, and it's going to be like a Hail Mary type situation here for Lacerda, I think. And, you know, on the feet, I didn't see much striking of Lacerda. I will say he's going to have like a like a nine-inch reach advantage here, so maybe that could ha ha help, but I got to go Stamen here. I think he's the rightful favorite, fighting the better competition, being the minute winner, but... Lacerda is a dangerous guy for what it's worth, but give me Stamen for the, I'll say decision win for Cody Stamen. All right, yes, yes, we have Josie Ann Nunez going against Zara Farron. We have Josie Ann Nunez, 29 years old, 5'2", with a 67-inch reach, 9-1 and one and 5-0 and oh in her last five fights. Zara Farron, 36, I think she's actually, she 36 or 39, so... I think Tapology is saying 36, but I, I could have swore I saw Sherdog saying 39. Regardless, she's she's um, she's getting up there in terms of uh, age. But yeah, uh, Farron she is has a 73 inch reach and she is six and four and two and three in her last five fights. We shall take a look at these odds. We see Josie Ann Nunez, one of the biggest favorites on the card, opening up minus 325, currently minus 550. Zara Farron opening up plus 275 and currently plus 420. So, after the fights on Saturday, uh, this was the first fight I, I got into, and man, I was watching Zara Farron, and I don't know, I was I was at a loss loss of words. I mean, this is bad. This is this is real bad. First of all, um, man, I don't even know what to say about this fight. Like Zara Farron, she's been finished in both of her losses in the UFC in the first round. Spencer got her out of there with some grounded pound. Megan Anderson got her out of there with a submission. And then I go and watch fights outside of that. And even those are like, ugh. You know, she's she's fighting very low-level competition. She's losing 
to a lot of these low level fighters and a lot of these fights are, are close and ugly it's, it's just it's very bad Zara Farron her her best attribute is her striking but even then I don't I this this has to be one of the lowest level fights um I've ever I've ever seen I mean this is this is terrible um Josie Ann Nunez I don't think she's the best fighter in her own right but she's she's much better than Zara Farron um if Nunez was to to grapple here she's going to run through Zara Farron Farron has no grappling whatsoever uh no takedown defense no ground game fighters able to take her down get into dominant positions and finish the fight if Nunez was to wrestle which she hasn't really shown to but I bet she I bet she could do it I bet she absolutely could do it um she should finish Zara Farron um but if, if Nunez wants to to do what she does and, and walk forward um, although she does have a height and reach disadvantage and a big one, you know, walk forward and, and land big shots, I think that could work too. Zara Farron, her hands are low, her head does not move, terrible strike and defense. Um, looks pretty awful in there, to be honest. Um, you know, Nunez should win this fight and she should win it by first round knockout. So give me Nunez. This is uh, an interesting fight, especially for a pay per view, but. It's a fight we are going to watch. It's a fight that we are going to enjoy. And hopefully we enjoy some violence here with a Nunez first round knockout. My goodness. Okay, next we have Worley Alves going against Nicholas Dalby. We have Worley Alves, who is uh, 32 years old, 5'11", 72 inch reach, 14 and 5, and 2 and 3 in her last fight, in his last five fights. Nicholas Dalby is 38 years old, 5'11. 74 and a half inch reach, 24 and 1 in 3 1 and 1, or 3 1 and, and 1 no contest against Jesse Bronson uh, in his last five fights. All right, we'll take a look at the odds here. Some interesting line movement on this one. We have Worley Alves opening up a pick 'em. He went to plus 150. He's now down to minus 125 as a favorite. Nicholas Dalby opened up uh, a pick 'em, went all the way down to minus 180, and he is currently a dog at plus 105 here. And this is a, a challenging fight for me to break down personally. I know a lot of people are on Worley Alves here. And, you know, I'm going to pick the guy. But, man, Worley Alves is one of the most inconsistent fighters in the UFC. I mean, this guy is about as inconsistent as it gets. I think he has a ton of talent. I really do. But, you know, there's some fights where he, he goes in there and he puts on a master class performance, whether that's going in there and getting an early finish against, like, Lizez, or whether that's going in there and, and just putting an absolute beating on a guy and, and finishing him late, right? Um, and then there's other times where he looks good early, he looks dangerous, you know, he's, he's got his grappling going, you know, he's landing big shots, and then that second round hits, and he just falls off a cliff. So sometimes his cardio looks good. And then there's other fights where his cardio looks awful. So, I mean, it just, there's there's like two versions of this guy. Um, if the good version shows up, he's obviously going to be Dalby, but I, I just can't trust Alves, and I, and I never will. Um, Nicholas Dalby, I will say, he's going to have some advantages in this matchup. He's going to have the, the toughness, the durability edge in this matchup. Worley Alves has been finished. Um, when going gets tough, he seems to kind of crumble a little bit. Dalby, he's never been finished officially. Yes, he got finished by Jesse Ronson, but... Um, that fight wasn't no contest due to uh, Ronson popping for something. But uh, Dalby's also going to have the cardio advantage for what it's worth. But it's going to be Alves who's going to have all the grappling upside. It's going to be Alves that has the the danger in this matchup. Dalby's not dangerous at all. Alves is dangerous. It's just if this fight does leave round one, and I, I, I think it probably does just due to Dalby being so tough, you know, what is Alves going to look like in round two and round three? I think it could get sloppy. I think this could be a close fight. But I'm going to pick uh, Worley Alves. I think he's uh, the more likely fighter to finish this fight. I think he's the more likely fighter to grapple. And if he does grapple, pretty easy path to victory. I mean, Tim Means is able to to go for takedowns, push Dalby against the cage, win minutes that way. And then we saw like a 41-year-old Claudio Silva go out there and win a bunch of minutes against Dalby on the mat. So yeah, Worley Alves... He has passed a victory, but I cannot trust this guy personally. This is one I'll be staying away from, but I'll take Worley Alves to win. And I'll say a greasy decision on this one So for Worley Alves. All right, I, I cannot believe this fight is is this far down on, on the prelims, man. I mean, Terrence McKenney, fan favorite. You know, people people love this guy, and rightfully so. He's going against uh, Ismael Bonfim. 
Um, we have two Bond Fiend brothers on the card. Cannot wait to see how they how they both fare. But yeah, looking forward to this fight. Probably my favorite fight on the prelims, to be honest. And it's this far down. Uh, we have Terrence McKenney, 28 years old, five foot ten with a 73 and a half inch reach, 13 and four, and four and one in his last five fights. Ismael Bonfim, 27 years old, five foot eight with a 71 and a half inch reach, 18 and three, and five and zero in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Another closely lined fight where Terrence McKenney opened up a minus 131 favorite, currently minus 125. Ismail Bonfim opened up a plus 111 dog. He's currently plus 105. Um, man, lots of hype on, on both these guys, especially Terrence McKenney. Uh, Terrence McKenney is a, a fan favorite type fighter. Um, I see him, he's, he's gaining a lot of traction on Twitter and he's doing the whole social media thing. But even like the way this guy fights, I mean, you're never ever going to see a Terrence McKenney fight that's boring. I mean, it, it doesn't exist. I mean, you can watch this entire guy's career in 20 minutes. Uh, his fights are typically ending very quickly. And you can kind of see with, with the way this guy fights. He's going against Ismael Bonfim here. You know, three losses for Bonfim, all three of those by submission, right? But you take a look into that a little bit closer. Bonfim has been submitted three times, but two of those times were in 2012. And then one of those times were uh, in 2014. And one of those times was against Hoinato Moicano. So yes, he's been subbed three times, but he has not been subbed in a, in a very long time. I will say, I think Bonfim has patched that that hole up in his game. I think his takedown defense has looked a lot better since then. Um, his submission defense and, and ground game overall has, has looked much better, you know, night and day. So I think he's he's worked on that. He's patched it up. I think that's good. Um, I think his striking is good as well. I think Bonfim's a, a really well-rounded fighter. Um, but Terrence McKenney is is, is different. Terrence McKenna, I went back and watched the, the Dober fight, and we all know how tough Drew Dober is. Like, you need a, a, a metal baseball bat to finish somebody in Drew Dober, and, and McKenney almost finished him, not once, but multiple times. McKenney landed a, a huge knee to drop Drew Dober, and then a couple minutes later, uh, he landed that, that same knee on Drew Dober. Anybody else, if it was anybody else other than Drew Dober, uh, he would have been out of there, but Drew Dober is tough as they come. He weathered the storm and, and finished Terrence McKenney, and that, that's, that could happen here. But the reason I, I can't pick Bonfim here, and if you're picking Bonfim, it, it makes sense because you know Terrence McKenney, he's extremely dangerous, but he's extremely dangerous for a couple minutes. I just think Bonfim is going to have to walk through fire, just have to absolutely walk through a, a, a storm here, and I don't know if he can. Terrence McKenney hits like an absolute truck, and I think McKenney's making improvements as well in his striking. Um, and then on top of that, McKenney has that wrestling, really good wrestling. Um, he has really good grappling, and Bonfim has been sub three times. So um, I'm going to take McKenney here to, to win in the first two minutes and 30 seconds, and I'm going to take him to win by knockout. I think he lands a big shot here and finishes Bonfim. But if this fight gets past one half of a round, Bonfim probably finishes McKenney later in that fight. So, I mean, this is a fight where you, you got to love violence. You know, somebody's probably getting finished here. McKenney has 17 fights. 16 of them have finished under one and a half rounds. Um, so I like violence here first and foremost. But as far as a pick, I'll take McKenney to go out there and, and starch Ismael Bonfim in the first two minutes and 30 seconds. But if he doesn't, it's going to get sketchy. Going to get sketchy. I'm not betting a side here. But the pick is Terrence McKenney by first round KO. Oh, all right. Next we have Jailton Almeida going against Shamil Abdurakhimov. We have Jonathan Almeida, 31 years old, six foot three with a 79 inch reach. Um, he is 17 and two and five and zero in his last five fights. Shamil Abdurakhimov, 41 years old, six foot three with a 76 inch reach, 20 and seven and two and three in his last five fights. So we'll take a look at the odds here, and we will see that um, Almeida is the biggest favorite on the card. He is like minus a thousand. I see minus uh, eleven hundred. I see a minus twelve hundred there. We got Shamil around like plus six hundred there. Um, first of all, I'm not even sure this fight happens, and it's actually pretty frustrating seeing this fight just just keep getting rebooked because Shamil just keeps on on pulling out. Um, he keeps on pulling out, whether it's an injury, whether it's it's visa issues. I mean, the guy just keeps on on pulling out of these fights, right? Um, and I, I hope he doesn't pull out of this fight, but if he does, you know, who, who can blame him, right? I mean, this is a terrible matchup. I think the UFC hates Shamil Abdurakhimov. They are punishing this guy. Look at this. Kurt, they give him Curtis Blades, then Chris Dawkins, then, then they feed him Sergey Pat, and now they're giving him Gilton Almeida. 
Um, no wonder this dude Shamil's pulling out. I mean, this is this is terrible. So this is probably Shamil's last fight in the UFC, and I think it's going to look a lot like that Blades fight, where Blades was able to take the fight down to the mat, get it into dominant positions pretty easily, and finish the fight. Um, the only difference, I think, is you know Blades got it done in the second round. I think Shamil does it in the first round here. Um, whether it's a grounded pound TKO, whether it's a submission, um, uh, Jalton's going to win this fight, and he's going to win it in the very first round. You can't pick Shamil here. You can't even think about picking Shamil here. It would be a, a massive upset. A massive, massive upset. Give me Jalton. Jalton, I'll say first round TKO. I think he's going to pound away. The ref's going to step in and, and stop the fight there. But uh, this fight probably doesn't happen because Shamil's just pulls out so much. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I'm wrong. All right. Next we have the brother of um Ismail Bonfim we have Gabriel Bonfim going against Manir Lazez we have Bonfim who is 25 years old 6 foot 1 with a 72 and a half inch reach he is uh, 13 and 0 and obviously 5 and 0 in his last 5 fights Manir Lazez 35 years old 6 foot 1 with a 76 inch reach 11 and 2 and 4 and 1 in his last 5 fights so we'll take a look at the odds and we see that Bonfim is a favorite he opened up as a minus 140, currently minus 185. Manir Lazez opened up plus 120, and he's currently plus 160. I think both of the Bonfim brothers are, are pretty good. Um, but, but man, Gabriel especially. The thing about Gabriel, he, he's only 25 years old. So he, he's two years younger than his brother, the younger brother here. And, man, I went and watched his entire career as much as I could, and um, just extremely impressed with the guy. He's, he's dangerous everywhere the fight goes. On the feet... I will say, on the feet, he is a little bit hittable. He does take a couple to give a couple, but man, this guy has so much power on the feet. And then what impressed me the most about Gabriel Bonfim is the ground game. Um, you know, we got that Von Flew choke on the uh, Contender Series. Um, but even outside of that, like, I saw him get a, a nice uh, Darsh choke as well. Just very dangerous on the mat. And I, I think he's going to use that here in this matchup against Minier Lazez. On the feet, like, Lazez is a, is a very good striker. I mean, the nickname, the sniper, I think that fits him. He made his debut against Abdul Razak Alassane. And, and when was that fight? Uh, two years and five months ago. So it was around, he was like 32, 33, right? So he made his debut kind of late in his career, and, and nobody really knew much about this guy, including me. And uh, Abdul Razak Alassane was just a massive favorite. And Minier Lazez went in there and, and ate every single shot of um, Abdul Razak al -Hassan. and if you guys know Abdul, I mean, the guy hits like a truck, we saw it last week, right, so um, Manir Lazez has an absolute chin on him, but, you know, Gabriel Bonfim, I think he just has a lot of paths to victory here, I think in the striking, I actually favor Lazez in terms of being the minute winner, but it's going to be those big moments of Bonfim, landing the bigger shots that I think are going to carry him here, but other than that, I, I think Bonfim takes his fight down to the mat, and when he does, this guy's no joke when it hits the ground. So I'm going to actually just say uh, Bonfim gets the sub here. I'm going to say he takes down Lazez and gets the sub at some point in this fight. I'll say second round. I don't think Lazez is a, a bad fighter by any means. I'm just a very high on Gabriel but Bonfim, 25 years old, 10 years younger in this matchup, dangerous everywhere. Uh, I think there's a lot of hype on this guy, and I think that hype is warranted. And I think he does go out there and submit Manir Lazez, and I'll say second round for it. All right, next we have a, another newcomer, um, another replacement. We have Tiago Moises um, going against Mel Costa. We have Moises, who is 27 years old, a 5'9", with a 70.5-inch reach, 16-6, and six, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights. Mel Costa, he is 26 years old, 5'10", with a 73-inch reach, 19-5, and 4-1 and and in his last five five fights usually by now i'd have the pronunciation done for this guy's first name but went and watched the tape on this guy and the announcers weren't even trying it so i'm not even gonna try it i'm gonna say mel that's what they were doing so mel costa is what we'll call him um so we take a look at the odds here and they just recently came out tiago moises opened up minus 300 no movement there uh and then mel costa opened up plus 250 and he is currently plus 250 so Went and watched this Costa guy. There's not a lot of footage out there on him, which which kind of sucks. I mean, he has 24 professional fights. Was only only able to find like two or three fights with the guy. But from what I've seen, his, his striking's very good, and I actually would probably give him the striking advantage in this matchup. Tiago Moises' striking's looked improved, but 
man, I mean, the, the Joel Alvarez fight for Moises was a, a horrible look. But, you know, before that, like, I, I like the improvements Moises was making in his striking. But Moises is, a, is, is, is bread and butter's that grappling. This guy's a legit black belt in BJJ. Um, the wrestling's, it's whatever. But if he does get the fight down to the mat, it's his world. And I think that's his path to victory here. Um, but, yeah, like I said, on the feet, Cost is a really good striker. Throws a lot of power. I like the striking out of the guy. It's just um, I do think there's somewhat of a hole in his game, and that's the takedown defense. He has been taken down very easily, I saw. Um, saw him get taken down, like, like five times in a fight, and that's not going to cut it here against Thiago Moises. Moises should be able to get this fight down to the mat. He should be able to either con control Costa, potentially get a submission. Costa looks like he does have some solid grappling from what I've seen, so I'm going to kind of lean towards the decision route for Thiago Moises, but I, I got to go Moises here. Moises has fought the better competition, and it's it's not even close. You know, Moises fighting guys like Islam Mahachev, you know, guys like Joel Alvarez, um, Bobby Green, Michael Johnson, Demiris Magulam, you know, guys like that. It's going to be a big step in competition, a tough debut for Mel Costa. But I do think he could have some success on the feet. It's just, you know, Moises is going to take this guy down. And like I said, when he does get the fight down to the mat, it's his world. Give me Moises. Moises by decision. Okay, next we have another uh, newcomer. And another guy stepping in on short notice. We have Gregory Rodriguez going against Bruno Ferreira. Really looking forward to this fight. I think this fight is, is one of the most exciting fights on these prelims. We have Gregory Rodriguez. He is 30 years old, 6'3", with a 75-inch reach, 13-4, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Bruno Ferreira, 30 years old, 5'10", 9-0, and, and obviously 5-0 and in his last five fights. So, Bruno Ferreira, contender series guy, stepping in on, on short notice here. Uh, Bruno Ferreira, the guy has nine wins, all nine of those coming in under one and a half rounds. Uh, the, I think he has maybe one win early second round, but... Yeah, the thing is with Bruno Ferreira, I think he's a very dangerous fighter, but I went and watched, you know, all his fights or as many as I could. I think I watched like five or six of them. And in those fights, when he's winning these fights, he's winning them, you know, with ground and pound. He's winning them by submission. He's winning these fights on the mat. And don't get me wrong, he has vicious, vicious ground and pound. It's just, I don't see him taking down Gregory Rodriguez. And I don't see him having any success on the mat against Gregory Rodriguez. I mean, a lot of people don't know this. Because he doesn't use it, but Gregory Rodriguez, this guy is um, a legit PGJ black. I mean, the guy's grappling's incredible. He just doesn't choose to use that grappling ever. So I just don't see Ferreira having success on the mat. I think if Ferreira is going to win, it's going to have to be a knockout on the feet, and that's just not something he's shown me to be able to do. And he has power. It could happen. You know, Rodriguez has been knocked out, I believe, twice, once by Jordan Williams on the Contender Series. So that's always in play, but. Man, it, it's hard to pick against Gregory Rodriguez right now. When I when I heard somebody was stepping in to fight Rodriguez, I was shocked because who the heck is stepping in on short notice to fight this guy? Um, him going out there and finishing a very tough guy in Jung Young Park, a guy in Park that never gets knocked out, that was impressive to me. Him him starching Julian Marquez, who's as tough as they come, that was impressive. And then he went out there, battled some adversity against Injiquani his last fight, ate a huge knee, cut him open, one, one of the nastiest cuts I've seen. Um, came back and finished Injiquani in the second round. Like, Rodriguez is a savage, and he's only 30 years old. I know he looks 45, but apparently he's only 30, which is scary. I mean, this guy's good. So, yeah, tough matchup for Bruno Ferreira. Props to him for stepping up on short notice. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a tough one. Um, I think another violent spot here, but I'm going to take Rodriguez to win this fight. I'll take him to win by first-round knockout. I think he's going to be levels above Bruno Ferreira in this matchup. All right, next we have the final prelim for UFC 283. And, man, this is like the 1-800-GAMBLER fight, fight of the card here. A fight that um, I'm going to be staying far, far away from. It's a sketchy fight. It really is. Uh, we'll start with Pateria, who is 26 years old, 6'3", with a 75-inch reach. He is 18-3 and and 4-1 and in his last five fights. Mauricio Shogun Hua, 41 years old, 6 foot 1, with a 76 inch reach, 27, 13 and 1, and 2, 2 and 1 in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. And uh, Pateria opened up minus 240, currently minus 190. Shogun opened up plus 205, currently plus 165. First off, I want to say, you know, Shogun is a legend of the game. Um, this is a guy that is now 41 years old. To be honest, I thought he was going to retire years ago um and he's and he's still going but 
This is going to be his retirement fight. And I see what the UFC is doing. They're like, man, you know, <laughs> who on the roster could go out here and uh, who, who could Shogun be in a fight, right? And, and they're giving him Pateria, who, man, ugh. Pateria, I, I just, I just, I'm not sold on the guy. 18 and 3, a lot of those those wins are against super low-level guys, and we saw him when he took somewhat of a step of a competition against Nega Mariano, just get completely destroyed in that fight, knocked out in the second round. So it's a tough fight to call because we have Shogun, who, in all due respect, is, is, is washed at this point and has been washed for a, a while, a while. Um, and then we have Io Pateria, who I, I don't think is UFC caliber. So it's a, it's a tough one. Um, Pateria, I think he has a huge hole in his game. And I think anybody that can wrestle is going to exploit that hole in the holes to take down defense. Um, I've seen him taken down easily. No resistance. No get-up game. Um, he can be held against the cage for minutes at a time. I mean, this guy has a huge hole in the grappling. And someone's going to exploit that. But is that someone a 41-year-old Shogun Hua? I mean, I just, I don't know. You know, Shogun, we take a look at his last couple fights. Not really going for many takedowns. He got one against Paul Craig, who has a 0% takedown defense. Um, other than that, he took down uh, Nagara once um, or twice. Um, he took down Tyson Pedro back in the day, like like five years ago. Um, took down Jean Vellante like six years ago. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's one of those fights where I think it's a, a winnable fight for, for Shogun, but... I could also see him getting knocked out in the first round, and, and that's kind of where I'm leaning is, is him getting knocked out in that first round. Just because Pateria, I don't think he's amazing, but what he does have is he has power. He has finishing ability, 18 wins. I believe like 15 of those wins, 14, 15 of those wins come in the very first round. So that's where I'm going to be leaning, the first round knockout for Ia Pateria, but I don't trust either of these guys. Either of these guys. This is the sketchiest fight on a car on the card by a mile in a fight where I will not even think about being being in, involved in this fight at all from a betting perspective. So, um, big pass, Pateria first round knockout for me. What what a what a fight. Um, but yeah, Shogun's gonna retire. I, I thought he should have a while ago, but um, maybe you can go out here and get the upset. But man, I don't know. I can't pick it personally. All right, next we have the main card. We are starting this main card out with a, an absolute banger here. One of my favorite fighters, uh, Paul Craig, going against Johnny Walker. Uh, just cannot wait for this one. We have Johnny Walker, 30 years old, six foot six, with an 82 inch reach, 19 and seven, and two and three in his last five fights. Paul Craig, 35 years old, six foot three, with a 76 inch reach, 16 five and one, and four and one in his last five fights. Johnny Walker's a favorite. Uh, Johnny Walker opened up minus 150, currently minus 190. Paul Craig opened up plus 130. He is currently plus 165. And it, it's simple as this. I see this fight playing out one of two ways. Um, the first way, and I think this is the most obvious way, the most likely way this is going to happen, is Johnny Walker knocking out Paul Craig on the feet. Johnny Walker is going to be much bigger, and we know how explosive Johnny Walker is. On the feet, it's not even close. Um, you know, Paul Craig... His striking's just not good. I mean, he's 35 years old. He hasn't really shown, I mean, he's shown some improvements in the striking, but even then, he's going to be at a, a disadvantage in the striking against against anybody in the top 15, right? Um, and Johnny Walker is in the top 15. And on top of that, like, Johnny Walker has so much power. I mean, we've seen him. I remember the the, the flying knee against Misha Serkinov. I can see that happening here. But, you know, he has a, a ton of power. Like, on the feet, it's Johnny Walker all day. It's it's not even close. And he's the more dangerous guy. It's not even close. And I know Johnny Walker, he has he has chin issues. I think both these guys do. Johnny Walker, his chin is very questionable. Paul Craig's not knocking this guy out with anything. So, um, the first way I see it playing out is Johnny Walker knocking out Paul Craig. I think that's very likely and, and, and how I'm kind of leaning. The second way... I see this playing out is Paul Craig pulling guard because Paul Craig is not taking down Johnny Walker. And I don't think Paul, uh, Paul Craig takes down a lot of these guys up in the top 15. He's not taking down Johnny Walker, who's much bigger, just physically so strong. Um, he's not taking down Johnny Walker in this matchup. Paul Craig is going to have to pull guard like he did in the Uzdemir fight, right? Um, it's going to be up to Johnny Walker to make a, a smart decision here. Is Johnny Walker going to go down to the mat 
with Paul Craig and, and give Paul Craig that opportunity. Um, and I don't know. I don't, I don't trust Johnny Walker to to not go into the guard of Paul Craig, and that's why I can't lay minus 200 on him. But if Johnny Walker is smart, he's going to um, disengage when the fight does hit the mat and keep it on the feet. Because on the feet, it's Johnny Walker. It's not even close, and he knocks out Paul Craig. But if this fight does hit the mat, I do think Johnny Walker can, can even finish Paul Craig on the mat. I think he can with, with ground and pound. But you're giving Paul Craig a path to victory. Um, Johnny Walker has been submitted before. Uh, it was a, a while ago, I do believe, but still he has been submitted nonetheless. And Paul Craig's dangerous. He can submit anybody in the division at any time, right? Um, he submitted Magomed Ankalaev in the last second of the fight. So it's all going to come down to the fight IQ of Johnny Walker. I was so high on Fulkan Uzdemir um, against Paul Craig in his last fight. Uh, one of my most confident picks on the card of the year even. Just because I, I trusted Uzdemir to, to not... Uh, go down to the ground with Paul Craig and mess around on there, and he didn't. And, it, and Uzdemir looked like a massive favorite. Paul Craig looked looked silly in that fight, um, but I don't think this one gets that extended. I think Johnny Walker puts out Paul Craig, and I think he does it in the first round here. But if this fight hits the mat, and you do have a Johnny Walker ticket, especially at minus two hundred, you are going to be sweating, sweating. But give me Johnny Walker. I'll take him to win by first round KO. Okay, next we have um, Jessica Andrade going against Lauren Murphy. We have Jessica Andrade, 31 years old, 5'1", with a 62-inch reach, 23-9, and and 3-2 and in her last five fights. Lauren Murphy, 39 years old, 5'5", 68-inch reach, 16-5, and and 4-1 and in her last five fights. Jessica Andrade, massive favorite, opening at minus 500, currently minus 450. Lauren Murphy opening up plus 385, currently plus 350. Um... Yeah, so I'm, I've always been a big Andrade fan, and you take a look at like who she's losing to recently: uh, Valentina Shevchenko, Rose Nama Yunus in a, a close decision, Zhang Wei Li. Like she's losing to the best of the best as of late, right? I've just never been high on on Lauren Murphy at all. Like even like you, you take a look at the level of competition of Lauren Murphy, and yes, yeah, she's she's fought Valentina, she got knocked out, but other than that, I mean, she beat Aliyah Shakarova. Roxanne Mata Ferry, Mara Morella Barella, you know, Barb Honchak, uh, Joanne Wood. I mean, these are these are rough. Um, yeah, she she beat Misha Tate in her last fight, put off the upset, but man, and now she, now she's 39 years old. Um I don't think this is really close, to be honest. I mean, the only thing I'll say about Lauren Murphy is she's super tough and she's super lucky, hence the the nickname there, because she's lucky because she's losing a lot of these fights. Um, I thought for a fact she lost the, the Joanne Wood fight. Uh, thought that, I mean, it was close, I, I suppose, but a lot of people thought Joanne Wood won that fight. Um, the Andrea Lee fight, a lot of people thought that Andrea Lee got the job done there. Yeah, this should be, uh, Jessica Andrade. I, I like Andrade. I think she's settled down a little bit, though. She used to go out there, like, just come, like a, like a Terrence McKenney and try to take your head off. I think she still does a little bit of that, but... She's calmed down a, a tad, which is which is good. Um, she's the more powerful striker in this matchup. She's going to walk forward pressure. She's going to land more volume. She has all the takedown upside here. She's much younger than Lauren Murphy. Just a lot of reasons to like Jessica Andrade. If you're going to pick Murphy, it's probably going to be a robbery. And we saw the the Vieira fight last week was, was really close. Um, a lot of people thought Vieira won. And maybe the fight does go to decision here. I'm actually picking it to go to decision. Maybe the judges screw it up. But outside of the judges screwing this one up, I mean, I think it should be Andrade here all day. Am I laying minus 450 Andrade? No. no. Um, but as far as the pick, I will pick Andrade with some pretty pretty good confidence. And I'll say she does win by decision. I'm gonna gonna respect the the toughness, the durability of Murphy. 21 fights, only been knocked out once, and it was against Valentina, and it was late in the fight in the in the fourth round. So give me a Jessica Andrade to win. And give me Jessica Andrade to win by decision. All right, guys, a couple fights left. A um, couple very good fights left. We have Gilbert Burns going against Neil Magny. And I'm excited for this one. We have Gilbert Burns, 36 years old, 5'10", with a 71 inch reach, 20 and 5, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Neil Magny, 35 years old, 6'3", with an 80 inch reach, 27 and 9, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Burns, big favorite, rightfully so. Open at minus 285, currently minus 450. Neil Magny open at plus 245, currently plus 350. So, um, kind of like Andrade in, in, in her last fight. Like, 
Uh, Burns is, has been losing lately, but you know he's losing to Kamara Usman, and he lost to uh, Hamzat Chimaev. Um, outside of that, he was on a pretty good run. But yeah, he lost to Chimaev, and that fight was close. That was uh, Chimaev's toughest fight to date by a mile, and that fight was competitive for the majority of the, more, the majority of it. Um, and then he lost to Kamara Usman. That fight was competitive for a second. I think Burns had one good moment in the first round where he hurt Usman, but Usman uh, ended up taking over and, and finishing him in the third round. But, man, this is a for, this is a big, 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 big step down in competition for Gilbert Burns, fighting fighting Hamzad, fighting Kamar Usman, fighting Stephen Thompson. You know, he fought Woodley. You know, Woodley was towards the end of his career to, um, at that point, but still, it's a big step down in competition going from Jemayev and, and Usman, I'll tell you that. And, and stylistically, not only that, stylistically, this is a, a great matchup for Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is a wizard on the mat. I mean, this guy's jiu-jitsu is on another level. Um, you know, he's, he's always in multiple um, you know, tournaments and stuff outside of the UFC. You know, He's um, just a, a, a legit black belt in BJJ, phenomenal on the ground, right? And Neil Magny has a 57% takedown defense. There's been multiple fights where Neil Magny's getting taken down and either controlled for 15 minutes or subbed. We saw Shavkat take him down, control him for the, the entire fight, and then submit him in the second round. We saw Michael Chiesa take down Neil Magny and control him for, what, 15 minutes and 21 seconds of a 25-minute fight. Um, what else? We saw RDA sub him back in the day. Uh, we saw Damian Maya sub him back in the day. Um, we saw Serge Mariah sub him back in the day. I mean... Burns is going to get this fight down to the mat, no, no doubt about it. I don't think Burns has the best wrestling in the world by any means, but he's going to be able to take down Magny. And when Burns get this fight down to the mat, it's it should be a wrap, right? I mean, Neil Magny's been submitted a ton. He's been submitted five times, and you're telling me he's going against Gilbert Burns here? I mean, I think Burns submits this guy, and I think he does it probably early as well. Um, Burns is no joke on the mat whatsoever. On the feet, you got to favor Magny just because he's going to have a, a massive reach advantage. I love the volume of Magny. Um, but even then, like on the feet, Burns is going to have the power. He's the more dangerous striker. But this fight's not going to play out on the feet. Burns is going to take this fight down to the mat, and I think he gets a submission, and I think he gets a submission in the first round. So give me uh, Gilbert Burns to win this fight. I'll take Burns to win by first round submission. I think he does get Neil Magny out of there at, at some point in the fight. All right, co-main event. Davis and Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, number four, hopefully the last one. I mean, I I enjoy the fights, but I would like to see um, some new guys in the division. You know, I'd like to see Pantoja go for a title in the near future, right? So um, hopefully this is the last one, and I think it will be. But we have uh, Davis and Figueredo. He is 35 years old, 5'5", five five with a 68-inch reach, 21-2-1, and one, and 3-1-1 one one in his last five fights. Brandon Moreno, 29 years old, 5'7", with a 70-inch reach, 26-2, and two, and 3-1 and one in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. And as you'd expect, with you know them being 1-1-1, one, one and one, uh, we have a pick em odds. Minus 110 each way. And I don't think those lines move the entire week, to be honest. Um... These guys are, are very evenly matched, very evenly matched, and we, we've seen that in the first fight, and we saw it in the third fight, and then in the second fight, Moreno did get the finish, but uh, Figgy did have some problems with Wake. I believe he's in the hospital like the night before, something like that. Um, so I'll, I've been on Figgy in all three fights. I'm 1-1-1 I'm one, one and one in picking this, this, this guy's fights. I, I've picked Figgy in the first fight, the second fight, and the third fight. Believe it or not, I'm actually kind of... Leaning the other way here, though. I'm kind of leaning Brandon Moreno for a couple reasons, and hear me out on this. Brandon Moreno is going to be six years younger. Uh, Davis and Figueredo just turned 35, and this is a guy that really struggles to make the weight. Um, he's huge for the flyweight division, and we've seen him struggle making the weight in his last several fights. Um, and it doesn't get any easier, right? You know, he's getting older, and Quite frankly, I was kind of shocked to see him coming back uh, to flyweight. I thought he would move up for sure after his last fight, but no, he's coming back. So I, I don't like that for Davis and Figueredo. I think he needs to move up. The weight cut looks just brutal. Um, and like I said, in that second fight, he was like in the hospital before. Um, there was a Benavides fight where he missed weight in the Benavides fight, the first one. Um, just continuously struggling with the weight cut. 
And I also saw something. I was looking at Davison's Instagram, and you know how he was at Fight Ready in his last fight, which I love that move to Fight Ready for Davison. I thought it was a great move. Um, I haven't seen him at, at Fight Ready for this camp. I think he's training at Team Figueredo here, his gym, which I don't like that at all. Um, I'm not sure if he's just not posting or whatever, or if he's there or not, but by the looks of it, it doesn't look like he's at uh, Fight Ready. So I don't know. This is a fight where you you got to see the weigh-ins. You, you got to see the weight. You got to see how Davison looks on the scales. You got to see if he makes weight. Uh, this guy has to to kill himself to make this weight. So um, I got to see the weigh-ins for this one. And, and the weigh-ins are going to probably be the deciding factor if I, if I bet this fight or not. You know, if Davison shows up and he looks incredible at 35 years old at, at, at flyweight, um, makes the weight, probably not betting this fight. If he doesn't look good, if he, if he looks like he really struggles, uh, I'll probably, we'll take the flyer on Moreno. But I think whoever, if you're getting plus money on this fight, I think that's the side. I mean, these guys are just so evenly matched. But man, um, the weight cut of Figgy scares me. The age of Figgy scares me. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting fight here. Brandon Moreno, you know, younger, going to have the better cardio. Um, Moreno, 28 fights, never been finished. I like that. I like the volume of Moreno as well. We saw in the third fight, like Moreno was, was winning a lot of these minutes. He was outlanding Figueredo in a lot of these rounds. It's just Figueredo would steal around with a knockdown, you know, late in it, right? If, if you know, Figueredo landed three knockdowns in that fight, if he landed two or one, I mean, he, he lost that fight. That fight was super close, and I had a ticket on Davis and Figueredo as a dog in that matchup. Um, but I think I'm going to switch it around here. I'm going to go Moreno. I'm going to take Moreno to win. I'm going to say by decision, but if Figgy has a tough weight cut, I'll say I'll change it to inside the distance, but I, I do need to see Figueredo on the scales. That's going to persuade me one way or another whether I, I bet on this fight or not. But yeah, give me uh, give me Moreno for, I think, the, the slight upset. No, it's a pick him. Yeah, I, I do see Moreno at plus 100 on one book, but other than that, it's a, it's a straight pick him. So we'll see where the line goes. I To be honest, I don't expect it to move, so it, it won't even be an upset. This fight you know, on paper can go either way. So I, I'm going to side with Moreno, though. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to take Moreno to win and win this fight by decision. All right, next we have the main event. Phenomenal fight. If you guys have not done already, um, like, subscribe, comment down your significant strikes for um, this 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 fight here. But yeah, Glover the Shara, Jamal Hill, the vacant light heavyweight championship, we saw the uh, the Magomed and Goliath Jan Blachowicz fight last year uh, go to a, a draw, and um, that fight was Dana wasn't impressed apparently. So Dana, you know, uh, made this fight, which I, I like this fight a lot, but I thought Magomed and Goliath should be the champion, right? But we're gonna have a new champion here, and it's either going to be Glover Teixeira or Jamal Hill. Um, man, let's start with Glover. I mean, Glover he's he's forty three years old, which is is wild 43 years old and still competing and having success at this level um he's 6'2 76 inch reach 33 and 8 41 in his last five fights Jamal Hill 12 years younger at 31 he's six foot four with an 80 78 inch reach um 11 and 1 and 4 and 1 in his last five fights uh we'll take a look at the odds here and I, I think they'll be close and they are Jamal Hill opened up minus 150 currently minus 115 Glover the share opened up plus 130 he is currently plus 105. So I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with this. All I see is Glover's Glover's too old. You know, he's he's 43 years old. How's he gonna beat this guy? He's, he's old. I feel like we've been saying that for three years. I remember I remember saying that against Anthony Smith when he fought Anthony Smith. I'm like, oh Glover, he's he's 40 years old. How's he gonna how's he gonna beat Anthony Smith, right? And he was a dog in that matchup. Um went out there and destroyed Anthony Smith. Um, oh, he was he was too old against Tiago Santos, right? Destroyed Tiago Santos. I bet he was too old against Jan Blachowicz, right? Pulled off the upset in that fight too. He's, he's always a dog. He's always too old, and he's always winning. And even in like the the Yuri fight, I went back and watched that fight, which if you, if you haven't done yet, I recommend doing so. One of the best fights I've ever seen in my life. Glover's eating these big shots at at 43 years old. Glover's getting these takedowns. Glover's having a lot of big moments. Glover hurts Jiri bad at one point in the fight. Glover's landing ground and pound. He's landing elbows on the mat. He's, he's looking good. He's having a ton of great moments at, at 42, 43 years old in that fight. 
So yes, we can say that he's he's too old, and and, and that's a valid argument. That's kind of scaring me away as well. But you know how long have we been saying that? I mean, this guy just seems to get better as he gets older. I mean, Glover Teixeira has, has never looked better at at 40 years plus. I mean, this guy has looked phenomenal as of late. So, um, and that's what makes this t- this fight so tough to call because Jamal Hill. I'm high on the guy just like everybody else is. I really am. I think he's a, a great fighter. And I think he's you know he's only 31 years old. I think he can potentially be champion one day. Will it be this Saturday? Potentially. Um, maybe he could knock out Glover. But, you know, I think Glover's chin is, is getting a little bit disrespected. The thing with Glover, it's so weird. It's the weirdest thing. He's getting hurt a lot. He's getting rocked and wobbled a lot. But, you know, you, you can't finish this guy easy. I mean... The last time Glover's been knocked out was a long time. The last time Glover's been knocked out was it against was it against Gustafson? Yeah, it was against Gustafson in the fifth round back in 2017, and then he got knocked out by Anthony Rumble Johnson back in 2016. But since then, you know, there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fights. Against very hard hitters like Tiago Santos, Nikita Krilov, Kudalaba hits hard, Jiri especially, and he has been knocked out in in nine fights. So could could Hill knock him out though? Absolutely, that's on the table. But I have some concerns uh, again for Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill, I, I question his takedown defense. Um, you know, ever since the Darko Stosic fight where Darko t- um, took him down six times, I will say you know Hill was able to pop back up, but still, you know, the takedown defense did not look great. And then this this last fight with Hill, it's a great win against Tiago Santos, but Tiago Santos, who takes down nobody, took down Jamal Hill six times. Um, and I went through Tiago Santos' record, and he's been in the UFC for a while. That was the second time ever where Tiago Santos landed more than one takedown, and it was against Jamal Hill. So Jamal Hill can be taken down. He absolutely can be taken down. And you do not want Glover to share on top of you. Um, Glover's ground and pound is some of the best in the division. You know, probably the best grappling in the division. Um, man, I mean, and, and Glover's going to be able to get takedowns here. I mean, Glover's wrestling is very good, even at 43. So Jamal Hill is going to get taken down. It's just, will Jamal Hill be able to pop back up? But Glover Teixeira is not Tiago Santos, and Glover Teixeira is, is definitely not Darko Stosic, right? So... Although Glover's 43, I, I think it's a very winnable fight for him here. But I'm with a lot of people in, in, in seeing that age of 43 and, and just thinking there's there's no way he can do it again. But like I said, we've been saying that for the last three years, that he, that he's too old, but he keeps surprising a lot of people here. So it's a close fight. Um, it's a fight that can go either way. Is, is Glover the share going to be able to get the fight down to the mat and finish it? Or is Jamal Hill going to land a, a knockout shot and, and finish Glover the share? Um, I'm going to pick the 43-year-old here. I'm going to take Glover Teixeira to get it done. I think he's the third oldest in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think Arlovsky's number one at like 45. Uh, I think Guido Canetti, if he's still in the UFC, he's 44. Um, Glover Teixeira, uh, 43 years old, one of the oldest in the UFC here. So I'll take him for the win. Um, can't have a ton of confidence in it, but I think somebody's getting finished in this one, and that's that's all I'll say for that. So, yeah, guys, comment down your significant strikes. Uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for all the support. Be sure to check out DFSbythenumbers.com. I do have two bets right now. I have a parlay that I had a, a leg last week hit, and it carried on to this week, and I also have a, a pretty big bet for this card thus far, and they're just going to wait for some props to get out uh, today. And... Um, yeah, a couple spots sticking out. Another card where a lot of these lines are, are pretty juiced, so probably another lightish card for me, but you know, it should be a, a good card. Hopefully all 15 of these fights stay on. So leave a like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers, and uh, see you guys at the live stream on Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and then we'll see you one last time Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims for best bet. And yeah, guys, best of luck. UFC 283, let us make some money and enjoy the card.